Is there such thing as budget night vision? Maybe, maybe not. So a lot of people out there think this is an oxymoron question, and there's no such thing as budget night vision, since at minimum you're going to be spending two to three thousand dollars on a device. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys what a more budget loadout can look like for a night vision device and all the supporting equipment that goes with that to make you somewhat effective at night with night vision. So it's not really possible to do budget night vision. Although budget is a very relative subject, what is budget to some people may not be budget to other people. Uh, some people may have more of a budget due to how they prioritize and just based on you know what they're doing with their lives. However, night vision can be gotten into for this amount of money or this amount of money. Now, how you wanna describe what inside of this is budget, it, that's, that's, that's up to you. But what we're gonna be talking about is the down here, kind of the, the, the cheapest you can really get into night vision. And unfortunately, it's still thousands of dollars. Uh, unless you go buy the Modern Warfare 2 premium edition digital piece of crap, uh, there's really no way, and I don't recommend that, uh, there's really no way to get into night vision for less than around $4,000. So let's go into it. So I have a few different devices here. Uh, this, as you can see in this bag, and this is a real, this is a real important point that, that I wanted to make in my, hey, can you build a rifle for $1,000? And that is support equipment to go with you know, said rifle. And I actually used an example in that video of uh, night vision. In order to buy night vision in a usable state, uh, so you're not just getting the monocular, you're also getting the mount and the helmet and the you know, IR laser system for your rifle uh, or for your pistol and then everything else that goes into it. So what I have here is a full, that I'm going to be using for this video, a full loadout in one duffel bag. And of course, y'all are going to ask, well, what duffel bag is it? It's a mystery ranch. I don't know. You can use any duffel bag for that. But what I have here is a, once again, budget relative uh, rifle. This is an arrow precision suppressed with a hollow sun laser, which actually is not budget at all. It's 800 something bucks. Arrow lower complete, also budget to go with the gun. We have an ops core bump. We'll talk about that here in a second with the night vision inside, chest rig, plate carrier, and hearing protection. More on all that later. So let's talk about the night vision itself. So I have it here contained in this ops core bump helmet. Now bump helmets happen to be one of the best options when it comes to uh, mounting night vision. You can do stuff like this little cry night cap. Uh, you can get the skull crusher, you know, different things like that. Uh, but I recommend a bump helmet. If you need ballistic capability, there are some budget options out there. This is a ACH helmet uh, that I picked up on eBay for around $450. Um, it is not super light. You know, this is not a, a cutting edge ballistic helmet, um, but you know, it's with some spray paint and whatnot, it's got arc rails. Um, it's not a bad option for fairly cheap money. This is a bump helmet that's around, uh, I think $280. And what I did for my first night vision setup back in 2015 or 16 or something like that uh, is I saved up and I bought a Team Wendy. I went straight to a nice bump helmet. I could have gotten some little skate helmet and drilled holes in it for a night vision shroud. And I was like, no, I actually want a helmet that has, you know, a, a good suspension system uh, that's got, you know, good padding in it and has an integrated shroud right there. You're actually going to, in some ways, save money doing that than spending all your time building, cobbling together this thing that's really not as good. Uh, so Team Windy bump helmet, Opscore bump helmet, $280, $300, something like that. So boom, I'm set. Now, unfortunately, the night vision device itself is going to be the most costly item. This is a PVS-14. PVS-14s range from around $2,000 
to about $5,000, with the $5,000 ones being the L3 uh, White Foss, uh, which is what this one is right here. Uh, but you can also get some really used, uh, kind of janky PVS-14s with green, green phosphor with all sorts of blems and uh, whatnot inside the tube for $2,000 or a little bit more. My first night vision unit was just a PVS-14. It was an AB housing, uh, was $1,800. And this was back in 2016. It was not the best tube ever, uh, but it was still Gen 3. So you're going to spend, let us say, $3,000 on your PVS-14 green, white, photonist, Elbit, L3, you know, whatever it's going to be used, unused, you know, there's lots of factors that go into night vision. So you got $3,000 right there. Well, then you have mount, which you can get by with a uh, potentially a Rhino on Rotos mount, which you can buy for like 50 bucks or less. Uh, I recommend getting something a little better. Uh, this is the fancier, um, a, uh, what's this one called? This is called the AKA2. And this one can either accept the standard J-Arm for the 14, or you can uh, get this for Dovetail as well. Now this is a little more expensive. I think they're around a couple, a couple hundred bucks, um, but you're going to get a night vision mount that can actually place the night vision in the traditional Rhino uh, upwards position, outwards position, like a cool person, and then uh, in the uh, operational uh, position Man, I just made that sound way more tactical than it is. The operational position for the night vision. Um, so again, $200. We're at 3000 3200 We're at, uh, with $300, we're at 3500 uh, right there. And then hearing protection. Now this is a big deal. I know you can get Howard lights for like $40 or whatever. Uh, I haven't had good experiences with some of those cheaper ear protections on the market. Uh, they don't block sound very well, they're not very comfortable, and they don't necessarily have good amplification. Uh, so I use Sordens. Uh, these are $280, $300, something like that. So with my EarPro, and these are the, this is the neck brand version, which is going to be much more comfortable if you're wearing it with a helmet than a, you know, a Howard Light or something like that with a traditional headband. Putting a helmet on over that absolutely sucks. It's going to be moving around. It's not going to be super stable, and that's going to prevent your night vision from being centered with your eye. So MSA Soren neckband is my favorite for this application. And this is a much more budget option than going straight to a dedicated ear pro solution that is going to attach to your helmet. So if you can only afford one set of ear pro, I highly recommend Sordens neckband. You can wear it, you know, in the day like normal, or you can throw your uh, helmet on top of that. So that's $300. So we're at $4,000 for the night vision, the helmet, the mount, the ear pro, all in one system. That doesn't even include iPro, but you can get that for pretty cheap. Unfortunately, the rifle is going to add uh, quite a bit of money to this whole situation. Now you could potentially already have a rifle, and that's something a lot of folks don't re understand. They, they're gonna look at all this loadout that I have and, and the total amount of money when I'm all said and done, and they're gonna go, that's too much money, I can't afford that right now. Exactly. You can't afford all of it right now, but you can start buying little stuff as you go. I would venture to say most of you watching this already have an AR-15. You already have a light on it, at least you should, and you already have a red dot on it. Then you may already have a chest rig, you may already have body armor. Now the only things you have to go get is a helmet, night vision unit, and a laser for your rifle, and you're done. So this is all a, a, a stair-step progression process. Going out and buying all this in one go, like, yeah, you could do that. You could clone my entire setup right here for the total amount of money. But most people aren't going to do that. Most people are going to buy this piece by piece and slowly upgrade to get to this together as a kit, as a loadout, as all the good stuff. So with all that said, rifle. This is a... Arrow completed lower. This is my. This is really my favorite way of uh, setting up rifles these days. Arrow completed lower. You know, is fairly cheap. It's two hundred and sixty dollars. I have the waffle uh, M4 stock on here. Nothing fancy. Nothing crazy. You don't need a super fancy stock. And I have a standard mil spec trigger. And then I went and bought a arrow uh, completed upper. This is their weird quad rail sort of a situation thing going on. I didn't like some of their other rails, and, and so I, I went with this one. A uh, 10 and a half front sight post gun. This is $620 for the upper, $260 for the lower. So we're in for under $1,000 for the gun itself. Now the problem becomes when I start adding the accessories, that's going to be a lot more expensive than the gun itself. This laser, which is a hollow sun, which everyone's like, oh, hollow sun budget. Uh, this is $860. It's actually the same price as a D ball I squared. But I wanted to play with this, and, you know, see, see what's up. Uh, so this is not a budget laser in the sense of other like lasers on the market. Uh, an OTAL is like $400 or something like that, but that won't have a slave laser. So $860 for the laser right here, which has Viz laser and IR laser only. So because, and we're gonna get into that, because it only has an IR laser, 
I have a Surefire, because it's one of the only lights out there that does this, uh, M300V. So what this has is white light functionality, you know, like so. And then by twisting the head, I then have IR functionality, which is only visible to under night vision and to security cameras, because it's emitting the light in the infrared spectrum. Uh, so this means I can actually throw this into IR, have something a little bit more powerful, and then run my laser when I actually have to shoot. Or if I have to shoot passive for whatever reason, I can then go to my red dot, which in this case is a primary arms SLX, which does have night vision modes and settings, which is pretty cool as far as the brightness. And I can use the illuminator to see stuff, you know, if my night vision can't intensify the, you know, the ambient light in the area, and then I can take shots with the red dot. So this entire system right here, 860, a dual surefire pressure pad and then the light bar that pushes the light further out so i have less splash on the suppressor um, this whole thing right here is like fourteen hundred dollars something like that so yeah it's expensive but if you actually want to use night vision and shoot with night vision you can use this as an observation device sure but if you actually want to run around and shoot with this you're going to have to put some money and stuff and it's not budget according to a lot of people out there now i would prefer to use an aimpoint pro on this gun for $445, um, but this optic really seems to upset um, people out there who really like uh, budget, the, the, the subject of budget, which this is a budget grade A optic as far as what this is. Um, but for whatever reason, this upsets a lot of people. Uh, so we're not gonna run that. We're gonna run the primary arms. I have a suppressor on here. Now suppressors are budget-ish. There is the $200 unconstitutional tax stamp you're gonna potentially be spending unless you uh, use a little bit of secret ingredient. And uh, this suppressor is $560, this is a YHM. And I have a burn proof cover on there because the can looks super ugly uh, with the spray paint getting melted off. <laughs> and um, so this is $560 added to the gun, plus 200, uh, potentially 700 and whatever. Uh, so the entire gun right here you're looking at, I think it's just shy of $3,000. So we have a gun that's shy of $3,000 with our night vision kit that's $4,000. So we're at, six something with all of this right here. And that isn't even getting into chest rig or plate carrier. So as you can see, getting into night vision, it's not cheap. So we're at a little over $6,000 with all this. What else do we have to go with this kit? Well, if you are looking for some sort of uh, piece of equipment to complement your rifle, which you potentially already own, I highly recommend a chest rig. Gives you the ability to carry your rifle magazines, which your gun needs you know, it needs food to function. So it gives the foods for the rifle. And then I also can have my other support gear, which in this case, my batteries for my night vision, my weapon lights, my lasers, uh, my headlamp for if I have to do anything, you know, admin, uh, even as a civilian, uh, chem lights, if I need to use those, uh, water, radio, communications, and medical. Uh, so what I have here is a Mayflower. This is one of my favorites, uh, the Mayflower. UW, I don't know what the model number is. Go to their website, you, you can look them up, you can look at them. Uh, but what this gives me is uh, four uh, magazine pouches for standard Stainag magazines. I can add more to the side GP pouches if I need to. And then I have all these pouches as not a modular rig. That's actually one of my favorite things about it. I have all these options here in the front. So I've got a uh, balaclava, I've got gloves, I've got a pistol mag, and I have another pistol mag, I've got a multi-tool, I can have a flashlight, uh, I've got a med kit in here, I can do radio or chem lights or water or whatever I want, uh, two tourniquets. Um, I can have all this stuff for not a ton of money. However, all the medical on here is about $120. The rig right now is 230 or whatever it is. Uh, I have our little T-Rex backstrap here, which is another 25. Uh, gloves are like, I don't know what these cost, I think 40 or so. Uh, Multi-tools, 100. Uh, Surefire flashlight that's normally right here, it's in my pocket, uh, is 180. Uh, my four magazines, it's $40, plus all the ammo, uh, plus my batteries, CR123s, uh, triple A's, uh, 2032s, and water bottle a dollar or two if you go to a gas station and pay way too much and uh so i'm looking at another i want to say like 500 dollars or something like that for this so we're at six grand a uh, little over six grand with that close to seven and then my last piece is adding body armor if that's something that i so desire or so need in this case i have a t-rex arms ac1 which is 190 dollars and then i can have l210s for around 340 dollars foam backers, this entire thing for under 600. So this for under 600, this for 500 kitted the way it is, uh, or 600 kitted the way it is, and I'm looking at 1200 for the kit, over two grand for the rifle, and then four grand for the helmet, the ear pro, and the night vision. And I have a pretty decent kit that can all fit in this duffel bag. 
So as you can see, if you talk, start talking about all the support gear and thinking about the support gear that goes into the night vision, it's not cheap to get into. You don't have to have the plate carrier and the armor. I know some of you guys in the comments are gonna be like, oh, well, technically you don't need this stuff. Like if you're wearing night vision and, and you're not just hunting hogs and you wanna own this or you wanna argue that you're owning all this for the second amendment and the purpose of the second amendment, uh, you're not just gonna have night vision. You're also gonna have a rifle, a fighting rifle of some sort. You're probably gonna want extra ammunition to go with said fighting rifle. And you also probably want some sort of protection against the other thing that you know, you're putting yourself between and you know, what's kind of going on in regards to the second amendment. So don't use the second amendment as an argument if you're not willing to talk about all this stuff and consider all this stuff. So, I think it's time to go shoot some stuff. So now we're gonna go ahead and set up the PBS-14. So Naruto's mount goes into the integrated shroud on the uh, helmet. Already made one mistake, nice, I like it, I like it. Uh, so as you can see, three different positions with this mount, which is pretty nifty. Dovetail, so this is the fancy one. I highly recommend uh, PBS-14s, unlike uh, binocular night vision and even PBS-7s, uh, are not gonna be able to support your uh, night vision stabilizers uh, located on most modern uh, nice helmets, uh, these little bungees right here. Uh, so I highly recommend, uh, for stabilization reasons, but also just to tie off your gear, uh, you put a tie down on your uh, night vision unit. I mean, if it's $3,000 or $4,000, like you should be protecting that equipment and you should be accountable for it. So what I have here is our SBL lanyard, which has shock cord. I'm going to stretch it to the back here so it is being Velcroed in. And then the other side is going to conveniently hook around the counterweight here. Oh yeah, I forgot to add the counterweight. That's like uh, $60 to the whole thing. Uh, but you don't have to have the counterweight. It's just kind of nice. Uh, although you do want some counterweight for this, even on a lightweight bump helmet. Uh, on a ballistic, you don't need it quite as much, but you'll want something back here. Uh, then the other thing you want to take note of is uh, do not store batteries inside your night vision, especially if you're using alkaline and you shouldn't be using alkaline. Night vision sucks those dry super fast. You should be using uh, lithium batteries uh, for sure. So have my battery right here attached to the SBL. So pop that sucker and we're going to drop that in. Screw the cap back on. And now my night vision is ready for operation. Uh, when you insert into the mount, do a little pull tug like you would do on a rifle magazine to ensure it is properly seated. And then as you see right here, the bungee is uh, simply running across the top and, uh, and it's attached here in the rear. And I've got, I had one mic, Alpha, Head, Charlie. This guy was way more controlled. Although I have a Delta on him. Alpha, Charlie, Delta. One delta. Ah! What's up, little guy? So one of the biggest issues that people have with PVS 14s is driving because of the lack of depth perception uh, compared to binocular night vision. Uh, but the funny thing with binocular night vision is you actually aren't getting a uh, real depth of, of field, real depth of view uh, with the binocular night vision because night vision, uh, as it is changing up all the photons and how the intensifier tube works, uh, it is processing and generating a flat image. Uh, we, since we can't see color and the shadows aren't always projected very well, uh, we actually are getting a flat image 
uh, through, uh, you know, your night vision. So whether you're using a binocular or a binocular, uh, you're still getting a 40 degree field of view flat image. Now the difference with binocular night vision is you're getting two flat images combining and then your brain does a little bit of action uh, creating sort of this illusion of depth perception. Uh, but the reality is a PBS 14, like what I'm seeing right here, single tube, a single flat image is uh, very close to being the same as binocular night vision. And I'm saying this is a guy who's used 31s more than 14s, uh, panos uh, more recently than a monocular night vision. Uh, but driving around here, I'm still going 40 miles an hour. I'm still moving fast. I do have a full moon for illumination, but uh, it's, it all comes down to training. There's some, some misconceptions around single tubes for driving. It's still pretty good. Uh, would I prefer to have binos? Absolutely. Would I prefer to have that artificial, you know, um, uh, setup? Uh, absolutely, as far as depth perception goes. Uh, but this is really not bad. I'm just going to adjust my gain, make it a little bit brighter. I've got IR lights in the front of my vehicle in case I need them, which right now with having a full moon, I don't. Uh, but when you don't have a moon and you're, you drive into one of these patches of trees on the road, that's where having the IR lights really helps. But uh, I can still zip around, do what I'm doing. Check these rocks. Yep. So something we've been doing a lot here is shooting... Uh, specific courses of fire that are going to contribute to the standards uh, that we are working on for our website. So this is one that we've been shooting this month for low light October. Uh, we have three USBSA targets five yards apart from each other and then we have the distances of 5, 7, 10 and 25 yards. And this is like a 46 round, 40 round I think this time I'm, I'm, I'm boosting it a little bit. It's like 45 rounds I think this time. Uh, shooting five different strings of fire Actually, I think it's eight total. And then what we're doing is we're calculating our points. So USBSA scoring, alphas are five, charlies are three, deltas I, I technically one, but they're really out in this case. And then we're dividing that by our overall time. So the time on all of our strings of fire put together, and that gives us our hit factor. Uh, so we're not, it's not a pass fail on like each individual string of fire. Like, oh, you, you know, you ran this one super slow. That's gonna contribute to the overall. Uh, if you can, you know, do well on everything as far as time goes and still have good hits, then you're going to have a good score. Uh, but we shot this against, uh, you know, some, all of us here in the company or a bunch of us in the company. And, uh, you know, oftentimes going a little bit slower and getting your hits uh, will give you a better score uh, overall um, once you add everything together. Uh, so this is not one drill that you can ace with luck and just being a, a one trick pony. Um, you are having to shoot and perform a number of skill sets uh, with a carbine, and in this case with night vision, uh, in order to have a good score of speed and marksmanship. One reason I really like the Mayflower chest rig is it is swift clip, uh, chasm compatible. So there's a couple of ways I can wear this chest rig with our slick carrier. I can simply wear the chest rig on top of it. So I put the plate carrier on, then I put the chest rig on top of it, very, you know, early 2000s style, you know, like so. Or because these are swift clip buckles with swift clip spacing, I can take off the H harness. This is why this whole kit here is it's just, just, it's awesome. It's great. Uh, I'm going to undo the back strap. We'll show that. So I have the placard, right? So now it's in placard form. And all I have to do is take these two buckles. I'm going to rip apart the hook, the loop section they have here. I wish they had more of this. It, it would be better for plate carrier use, but it, what this is, is it's good enough. Buckle these in. And now the problem is, as you will see, when I bring my cummerbund around, 
the sides are gonna flop all over the place. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna take the T-Rex Arms back strap, which is what I've been using, this lovely little invention. It's a one and a, basically to sum it up, it's a one and a half inch webbing, so it's a little more stable to the body, a little more comfortable. And then there's elastic on each end to give you breathability while also having this be super tight. And it's adjustable, uh, so you can quickly adjust it on the fly based on what you're wearing, wearing it on top of a slit carrier and things like that. But what we're gonna do is we're actually going to stick this sucker underneath the back flap so that this is housed inside the carrier and it doesn't slip back you know, to, to back here. It's actually gonna stay up top. Fold the flap down. And as you can see, that is going to trap this from coming down and it's gonna stay nice and high. And it's then gonna clip into the top buckle right here. Pretty nifty, isn't it? So then, to put this on, take the cummerbund from the AC-1, run this underneath the Mayflower, take the back strap and that's right here. That's going to buckle in. You want to ensure that it's fairly tight. It's going to keep these two wings in place. And now I have the chest rig without the entire harness uh, coming across the top. So I've just slimmed it up a little bit and I can you know, keep all these pouches nice and tight. I've got the elastic cummerbund still going on. I have the breathability of the elastic on the back strap and the breathability of the elastic cummerbund on the plate carrier. So I can have this entire thing pretty tight, but nothing's gonna be sloshing all around and moving all over the place. So I can ditch this, put it in my pack or whatever, and I can still wear my Eagle Yote back here with my helmet, my night vision, all my good stuff. And my back strap is covered by the rear flap of the AC-1, so the bag's not gonna interfere with that, and that's basically what this looks like right here. So as far as one loadout that can kinda do everything, there's no such thing though, um, this has been my favorite. You know, AC-1, uh, a larger chest rig I can clip into or run as a standalone chest rig like I was earlier, uh, a slick carrier that I can wear a pack on top of, uh, back behind, or I can ditch if I'm sitting in a vehicle and then I have the slick back, you know, bag in the front or whatever, uh, and I'm set. It's pretty nifty. I know having a PBS-14 isn't that cool compared to a set of DT and VSs, PBS-31s, or if you've got the bunts, a set of Panos. But the reality is, you can give a monkey any of that stuff, and if they don't have training, it's not gonna do much for them. Someone who has a lot of training on a 14 is gonna roll up someone who's got 31s, a set of binos, or even Panos. So it all comes down to training. Like we've always said in all of our videos, you know, even if you're stuck with a 14 or you don't have night vision at all, uh, if you know how to use a white light, you know how to move, you know how to shoot, you know how to land hits on target quickly and accurately, uh, you're a step above most people who own bino night vision. Now, I know it's hard to train uh, as far as shooting goes because there's not a lot of ranges here in America, unfortunately, as of right now, just with the culture that allow night shooting, night training in counties that have noise ordinances and all that stupid unconstitutional crap. But the reality is you can dry fire the majority of the stuff at home, activating your laser, high ready, low ready, you know, changing focus on your night vision, battery change outs, uh, movement, just move through your house with night vision, spatial awareness. Uh, don't step on a Lego, especially the Lego shark. Uh, you can do all that under night vision. It's for fr it's free. You don't need to go take some crazy dynamic night vision class. 
I have attended uh, one class from John Lovell a long time ago, and then everything else is just self-taught running around the range and then asking questions to people when I see them. Uh, this is not rocket surgery, knowing how night vision works, how the IR spectrum works, how your equipment works, how your weapons work, how your focus works. This is all stuff you can figure out on, on your own, or you can study a little bit of on forums, on the internet, and with videos such as this one, little tidbits here and there. So get out there and train. If you have a white light, train with that, slowly upgrade, budget accordingly. Whatever you, whatever you do, do not finance night vision. That's a small brain move, don't do that save up so you can actually own it and it's something that you actually possess and then if you want to get binos just figure out a plan to go that route and uh most importantly if you suck you suck